I'm Stefan Bellman and welcome to my podcast. I have some great news. I just received notice this morning that I was on the top 25 of the ultimate 25 podcasts that you need to listen to on art for 2023. I'm number 11. Can you believe that? Number 11. It just inspired me to do more and more podcasts. I had no idea that this podcast made such a difference in so many people's lives. So thank you all for listening to my podcast. Today, I have a special gift for you. This is a gift on marketing, and it's about getting your bio and your artist statement together. You know, a a lot of people, when they're putting together their bios, which is one of the most boring thing for anybody to read they don't think it through because it's all about marketing and branding you brand yourself you market yourself in your bio and you don't separate your artist statements from your bio you put them together you weave them together so that it's a beautiful tapestry of who you are who you are as a brand this is the most important key in your website and most artists fail to actually use that. So I recommend to listen in on this to the very end because at the very end, I am going to reveal some of my thoughts about painting in the national parks, painting from photographs versus painting on location. You don't want to miss that conversation. So sit back, relax, pour yourself a beverage and listen to the ultimate guide to marketing your bio on your website. Good morning out there in the world of painters. Thank you for waving so you could actually hear me. I like Shauna here. She's already painting. She's ready to go. She's going to produce some great stuff today. So this is the third week. Uh, This is the, the week that is dedicated to Art marketing, if it should come up, I asked for some bios, some, and I didn't get any. So, in fact, I've got very few artworks uh, to to look at, too. So, um, I'm not going to call anybody out, but, you know, if you're out there, this is a great opportunity for you to be part of our group. And uh, I'm right now in Las Vegas, baby. Studio feels a little bit different here. Is there any of you that are interested in having a question answered at this point before we start? I'm hoping to see some examples of artist statements. I know you asked for one, but I don't really have one or even know what to put in it at this point. Do you have a website? Yeah, for the business, but not for my personal artwork. Basically, let's just go over a little bit of that um, because that's kind of what this hour is about. For you guys uh when you put together a website they ask you know you have your bio you have artist statements you've got blogs you've got all these different things and for all intents and purposes nobody reads all that anyway and so if you're going to put together something it's got to kind of capture the viewer and and have them want to read it so they might go to your bio and let's just kind of talk about uh, bio and artist, uh, artist statements right now. If somebody comes to your website and they're interested in your work, they want to know a little bit about you. Now, we want to emphasize a little bit. So when artists are writing about themselves, they feel like they've got to put in their inspiration. They usually say, they'll start off saying, you know, born and 1962, you know, um, mother of a uh, uh, crop share, and my dad was, you know, a drunk and beat her up quite a bit till my mother moved out of there. And then I was born and, uh, you know, going through life, I always wanted to paint like, you well, of course, every four-year-old wants to be an artist. So, you know, that's kind of redundant. And then they started talking about, I painted in high school which is not really a big accomplishment, especially in high school. People who want to get through high school easy usually go to the uh, an art class. They say, if you want an easy A, take the art class. And then they embellish it. And then, you know, the, by, by now your viewer is just bored. Only put in there when you're going to start, you know, where you're born, if you want to share the year that you were born, 
Um, those are kind of good things. But you want to start off pretty early on discussing the things that really deal with your art. So, you know, you could say, you know, born and raised, like with myself, I was born in South Lake Tahoe, California, where I spent most of my child years running around in the woods. Yeah, so it was no, there's no secret why I became an artist. And the kind of artist that I was is that I was influenced by my landscape, my landscape paintings, by the area that I've lived in. And so that's pertinent to it. If I was born in the city of New York and I'm painting trees and, and lakes and meadows, I wouldn't necessarily engage in my early years because there's no correlation. And then you usually hear, well, I married my high school sweetheart. Um, you don't want to have things like, you know, you, you married your high school sweetheart, you had six kids, you couldn't go to uh, uh, art school because you gave that all up for love and then, you know, he dumped you for another woman and, you know, on and on and on. They don't, they're not interested, just like you guys are not interested in this conversation. So that, yeah. So only put it, if you went to college and you studied art, great. If you didn't study art, don't mention college. Don't mention things. Kind of get to, you know, skip through things. And it's like, now we're here. And so I got inspired a painting a few years ago watching Bob Ross. And I said, I could do that. And that's a good place to start your conversation if that's really the first part. So we could take three paragraphs and now we can take it to just a line. Then I always recommend that you start your, your bios in third person. The reason for that is third person, you can talk about your artwork. It's like watching a Ken Burns special. You wanna talk about your artwork in a third person so that you could say, you know, like uh, Shannon, if you're trying to market yourself, you would start off mentioning your first name and then your last name and then your first name. And you want to try to avoid her and she. Whenever you would use the word her and she, use your first name, your last name, or your first and last name. Because basically, you are marketing your name, your brand name. That's the, that's the thing that you are trying to push through. So that's why you don't want to clutter up with a lot of stories that are not that important. And just the facts, man, man. And your name is the facts. That is your brand. That's what you're trying to push out. So when you start off writing about yourself, it's, it's uh, Shannon first came to art in college and she became aware that art was her passion. She pursued it by going and get her master's degree of fine art. Shannon's work. Now, this is where we go pull away from your bio. You know, don't give me all that stuff. Get into Shannon's work embodies the essence of what art is. Through her work, we capture the beauty and the significance of what it is to be alive. And that's what we do as artists. Shannon is known for her artistic expression, both in subject matter and her painting ability. Her brushstrokes are filled with passionate flair as she embodies the essence of color and idea and design into one magnificent masterpiece that everybody, you know, wants to see kind of thing. So you see how you kind of build that up. Then you would put in a quote that said, you know, this would be a quote from you, and I'm just making this up. When I paint, I see the world. It's through my, through my filters, I can see color, and that's what it is that I want to share the essence of light in my compositions hopefully moves the viewer to change the world so that they can no longer walk in the forest again and see it the same way, unquote. Can you see how I just make this stuff up as we go? Uh, and you are welcome to use any of it as we go. And then it would go, you know, her, you know you're going to third person again. The whole idea is what you're doing is you're creating a marketing package. And what you want to do is get the viewer or the person reading it involved in your story pretty early. And then you want to get them to go, you know what? Hey, Martha, come over here. I want to go see this artist. She said, you know, after you see my work, you're going to change the world. And I'm fascinated with changing my world. Let's go over to the gallery and see some of her work. That's what you're trying to stimulate in the viewer, to try to get them to be so involved 
that they want to come and you know push your gallery or or go to a show or an expedition go grab their keys and go running to your gallery most bios don't do that and most artists that tell you how to write bios they do the same thing it's like they'll tell you just you know give them the old drabs and stuff the reality is is people don't care about you that's the reality and i know it's not you know that's really harsh but the reality is people really don't care about you if you can give them something if they can benefit from you if they can you know, see the world through your eyes so that their life becomes better it's a hell of a lot cheaper than therapy and that would interest them so you kind of have to get that that's what your bio should be now you can go to a lot of websites and they'll tell you how to do this thing they tell you how to produce your own bios and all that stuff and the thing is think about it it's about presenting yourself in a way that moves people to buy your artwork that's the reality of it and if it doesn't benefit them they have better stuff to spend money on your painting should remind them of a moment in, in time where they felt good. A lot of people are stressed right now. A lot of people can't even get to the national parks. Shoot, I don't even want to go to the national parks anymore because they're so stressful to get to. You've got to make a, an appointment, and if you don't show up between then, you're, you're banned after driving six hours to get there. It's like, you know, that's a lot of stress. So a lot of people will go, you know, your paintings remind me of when I was a child going to Yosemite when it was more pristine and not, you know, so cluttered with tourists. You know, they, they benefit from that and that eases their attention. Your artwork might be kind of abstract and probably they are influenced by the colors. Some people love purple and it's like they see your work and they go, yeah, she really does change my, my emotion by the use of colors. So in that description, you are trying to describe your work and what people will benefit from it. Don't tell me about your children that, you know, daycare and you were busy and, you know, your loved ones. It's like people don't care about that stuff. People want to hear, you know, even when your artistic statement and you pepper your, your bio with artistic statement and you pull it all together. You don't want to have, here's my artistic statement, here's my bio. Now, is sometimes when you're entering into a show, they want your bio. So what you do is you, you cut and paste the elements of your bio and you still keep it in third person. Because if you keep it in first person, it sounds like you're bragging. So you can't use like, you know, Shannon's artwork embodies the essence of what art is. I mean, if you use the word I in front of that, people would go, you are really full of yourself. But the thing is, sometimes that works. I have a I have a colleague. I've never I shouldn't even say I have a colleague. I, I know somebody up in Oregon. And everybody that I'm around because I'm in the art world up there, and some of you I've shared this story before, but I don't think Shannon was on our group. So she calls herself Linda, the world's greatest artist. I mean, that alone makes you want to like figure out, well, what's her artwork? But see, that's branding. It's like, you know, so, so people, I read it to people at galleries up in Oregon, and they go, so, do you know Linda? And I go, the world's greatest artist? And they go, yeah, do you know her? And I said, no, I've never seen any of her work. How about you? And she he go, no, I haven't seen her work, but I sure heard of her. And, you know, that's, that is like marketing, marketing 101. And that's kind of what this third level is about. I learned marketing from my uh, from my dog. My dog is the greatest marketer in the world, especially my poodle right now. He is just, man, he's a marketing genius. And, and I say that because part of marketing is this. I go into the kitchen, my dog follows me. I'm busy doing something and he scratches my leg. And I go, what? And he looks at me with these big, puffy, sad eyes as if he's never had food before. And, you know, I want a treat. And so, uh, okay, uh, so I'm not too busy to give you a treat. So I give, you, just give him a treat. And uh, then I go off on my thing. And seconds later, I have no idea where he puts it. He's scratching on my leg again. And I go, okay, here you go. 
And there are times when I don't pay attention to him or I'm tired of giving him treats. And uh, he just scratches harder. You know, he doesn't really care if I'm busy. It's like he wants a treat. And that's kind of what marketing is. You know, the, everything you do in marketing has to be focused on trying to get a result from the person you're marketing to. So just like the dog, you create the treat, which is your, your story, your bio. Every little segment of your, of your artist statement is to open up the opportunity of, of, of giving them, uh, giving your viewer a treat. And you want to try to make those treats and those ideas and the things that they're going to get so much that they want to click at your work or go to your Facebook or go to your Instagram. Because nowadays, people are they're inundated with stuff. Buy me, buy me, buy me. Well, the best thing you can do is just say, this is who I am. And kind of have this attitude like, if you want more, scratch my leg. You know, it's like, you know, you're going to have to put something into it. So my dog puts some work into it. And if I'm not paying attention, you scratch harder. And so your bio has to be that. If your first artistic statement doesn't get the treat that you want, then your second artistic statement. And I would put three artistic statements amongst your bio. And if you, if you go and enter an art show, you, they'll ask for your bio at that point. Um, and then they'll ask for your artistic statement. So you pull out the bio section and you submit that into you, into the uh, form. And then it says artistic statement and you pull those three artistic statements out and you use those into, and you wanna be kind of consistent. Through that, you're going to get an objective view in your artwork that has you focus while you are painting about the viewer. When I learned about painting, my father, who's listening in somewhere, I was 11 years old and I was wanting to be a bowler, not an artist. And my mom wanted me to give up bowling because she wanted me to take over the family business, uh, which was cake decorating. So she enrolled me on my bowling day. She enrolled me into painting classes. And I hated her for that. It was like, you know, I, bowling was my thing. I had trophies. I was really good. That was my identity. And, and so she put me in there. And then I had a chance to go to Hawaii. And when I was in Hawaii, uh, at a really early age, I wandered around. I was the first time I actually went into a gallery. And uh, I looked at all these paintings. And all of a sudden, I turned around. And there's this one little painting by the artist by the name of James Featheroff. And it just stopped me. So first time I actually saw an original painting that truly moved me. And this is what I use to base my marketing on. I stood there as an 11-year-old kid looking at this painting going, wow, wow. I mean, you know, just completely like, can you do that with paint? It was done on Masonite. I said, can, can you actually do that in paint? And I was so moved that I wanted that power to be able to reach out to an 11-year-old kid and change their world. I never had an opportunity to, to, to interact with James Featheroff to tell him how he changed my world. But that's the power you have if you focus in your artwork the right way. I say to uh, things on my podcast and stuff, I talk about don't go into your studio unless you're going to change the world. And this is the essence of what creating art is. It's communication. And here I am, an 11-year-old kid, and I'm just overwhelmed by this little tiny painting by this artist. To the point that I'm actually today still talking about that. That experience that I got from him changed my world so much that I'm sitting here in the podcast right now changing your world. I mean, that's the power that one person has. And when you get, when you're writing your bio, that through your bio, you can, you can describe your artwork to actually bring people in because you plan to change their world once they witness it. I mean, that's a big calling, huge calling if you can do that. But imagine now 
if you build a bio that's so magnificent. Now, I gave you some words at the beginning of this talk, and I said, you know, uh, about Shannon's work. I mean, all of you are probably really curious at this point, wondering what Shannon's paintings are. And Shannon's sitting here going, oh God, I want to show my work. It's like, it's not that good. I don't know. I just, you know, I, I'm not saying your work isn't that good. I'm just saying, you know, phew. So, it's a good bio to aspire for, though. Yeah, it is. It's something. But the thing is, if you put that out there, now you've risen your bar up high, and you're going to objectively look at your work and go, are these paintings really going to change other people's worlds? I mean, are they like James Featheroff, where, where an 11-year-old kid could come in and take a look at it? So first thing, you've got to kind of get the people in front of your work. And then you have a serious question at this point and ask yourself, does this work actually measure up to the description that I gave? So writing the bio becomes the foundation of who you are and what kind of artwork you're going to produce. So we look at writing a bio about ourselves as being a, a you know, a, a labored intensive thick, you know, and we all are asked to do that and we have it on our websites. But when you put it into context like this, your bio actually now becomes the foundation of who you are going to be as an artist, and it's really, really powerful. And so when I ask people, I say, yo, send me your bios. Um, and I do this with my coaching. So Sharon's down there. She's gone through my coaching as far as writing bios. She knows that words are, are really important to me when it comes to that. In fact, she at the end, if you take coaching with me, I've got a huge paragraph at the bottom of my emails. And it, it goes through... Uh, things, little quotes and things. Um, and she had something and she, she had something about, what was the word that you used instead? Want. Want, yeah. So she said, you're only as happy as, as you want to be. And I said, you know, wanting is, is an ugly word. You know, if, if we, yeah, it's almost like you, you're giving yourself up. Yeah, you know, I want to be a millionaire, but yeah, I know I can't. Want's a really weak word. And it doesn't do anything. It doesn't take control. And so I told her to use the word choose to be. And that's an empowering thing. When you choose something, you take power over it, over everything else. And so when you're writing your bio, you need to be very careful of just using words. It's like using the beginning of it. It's like, you know, Sharon always wanted to be an artist. Yeah, you know, well, yeah, I wanted to be a, you know, a banker too. So, you know, it's like, I want, I want, I want. And, you know, when you hear people going, I want, I want, I want, it's like, they almost sounds like a whining thing. You know, so it's like, I choose to be an artist. That's how I choose. That's my future as an artist. I don't want to be an artist. I choose to be an artist. So changing your words and, and I'm very sensitive. You know, even today I was talking with somebody and they were using, they, they couldn't get, their their work done and she says you know i'm kind of pathetic because i'm not painting as much as i want to be and i said don't do that to yourself don't use that word you can never take that word back yeah don't even go there just even how you describe yourself to yourself is really very important so you when you're writing your bio you want to choose your words very carefully you can create a positive stream of words that inspires people to witness your work and be part of your group because people love to be around people that inspire them. And so a bio no longer is, is something that you have to labor yourself to. Hopefully, by choosing my words right now, discussing with you what a bio should be, I'm hoping that you are... See, I'm, no, I'm not hoping. I know that you're going to be inspired next week when I ask you to bring your bios and artist statements to, to the table and we look at them, you will be inspired to work now. Chris, what do you think? I'm jotting down ideas as we speak. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are you inspired a little more about doing your bio? I am inspired bios? at the moment, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it makes a huge difference you know, when you show up a certain way and you have that kind of presence. So, And you've got to kind of look at writing 
as an art form. I was a horrible student. I was a horrible, you know, it's like I, I still have problems with spelling because I'm dyslexic. But um, I have fallen in love with transforming people by using my words as paint. It's and, drama, Stefan. Huh? Drama. It's drama, yeah. And, you know, it's like, and she knows, she knows a lot of times when I'm, you know, on in coaching calls. It's like, you know, that's why a lot of people love the coaching calls. Because it's like, I take you on this, this journey, you know, just through words. And when you realize how powerful words are, they become like paintbrushes and paints and your sentences and how you pause and, you know, don't be afraid to put in commas and several periods and lots of spaces because you can actually like create a cadence that moves people to read and more. And then, you know, if you're writing your bio, nothing is less inspiring for somebody to read. So I know, you know, Shannon's like, oh God, I wish I never asked this question. But um, look at your bio itself. So the paragraph by itself. And just look at it. You know, it's a bunch of words. And your viewer is going to look at it going, I'm not jumping in that pool. That just, oh no. It's like you're getting a huge book and you go, oh, I'm not reading this. I'm going to scan through it and get to the end. And that's how people are nowadays. You know, that's why they have fast forward. It's like, oh, this is getting too wordy. I'm going to, you know, fast forward it to the end. So look at that paragraph in your bio. Look, when you put your artistic statement, put your artistic statement so it sits in between two paragraphs and put it in like a composition. Put your work in there. Place that in a central focal point area. Um, and then make it darker and put you know, parentheses around it and maybe a little italic. And now a, a, a page of words now is broken up with a little bit of nice little music in between there. So they'll kind of pop in there. And that little artistic statement should stimulate them to tell them that there's some important information that you scan through and you need to go back and reread that paragraph. And then when you're looking at that paragraph, every place that your name is, you should you know, highlight it and make it darker. And maybe even take, uh, you know, when you're, you're writing that, uh, the size of that, of that text, bump it up one or two little, little bumps so that your, your name kind of jumps off the page a little bit. And then, you know, when you, when you use the word inspiration and the power of magic, you know, those words you want to pepper in, make those darker too, or even bigger. Make it so that people see, you know, your name and power and inspiration and magic, you know, and that paragraph all of a sudden has these sentences, and it could be two or three word sentences that you highlight. And now your paragraph has your name emboldened and a couple of magical words, because who doesn't love magic? And so you pepper that in. And you want to use words like that, magic and inspiration and power. And, and uh, insp you know, you want to find words that, that you know, people don't use a lot. And, and it makes them feel good. It makes them, you know. And now what you've done is you've created a stage for somebody to go, okay, you bend my arm. I'm going to read the paragraph. And now there's now they're hooked. Now they're hooked. Yeah, you know, they can't wait to get to your inspirational segment in there because they want to see how that hooks up to your bio. And now they're interacting with it. So you can see your simple little question. So what do you do when you write a bio? Now has become a legendary work, a document that in itself is an art piece that brings them to see an insight in themselves. Now it makes them want to grab the keys and go see your artwork. Because if you write bios that good, your paintings must be damn good. Seven, where do the testimonials go? I have it on the page with my statement, artist statement. But where's the best place to put them? The testimonials should go every, it should be peppered everywhere. You could use a testimonial within your bio. 
you could you could have an artist statement, then another paragraph, and then somebody that goes, I witnessed one of her works when I placed it on my wall. And you can take it to, as a section of a testimonial, put it in parentheses, and you know, and then at the end of that little thing, you can put their name in the corner. So now you've got a, a secondary person chiming in, going, "Yeah, this person, this third person, is talking about your your work." Is now justified by this other person who said, "Yeah, I agree with that because this is what happened to me." And so you you want testimonials throughout your whole website. You uh, on the front page, you pull out a testimonial if you have. One, um, you can put it on the sidebars if somebody gets a little bored wondering why am I reading this bio and they glance over and they say, you know, th uh, their interaction with you has changed their world. It's like, well, maybe I should wake up and read this thing because this person says you're amazing. Um, so you want to you want to pepper your your testimonials on every page. Um, you don't want to just have a page where you have your your you know, testimonials all linked up. So anything you can do to keep the viewer involved into that that thing. And it's going to be interesting now when we do uh, next month, when we do uh, some of these bios and testimonials and stuff, we'll, we'll actually go to people's websites. And that's how I'm going to ask you to do that next week or next time we meet on third level is to actually, when you're sending your pictures for me to look at, give me your website. Yeah, on the page of the bio and I will be clicking on those and we'll just kind of read through them and see how they how they are now I expect them to be huge and big and and absolutely I mean we're not going to look at your work so it doesn't matter so you could be as big as you want and if anybody ever says wow you're really full of yourself where did you think you could write about yourself like that say well I didn't write this my teacher did so blame me, you know, it's like I'm the, I'm the third person that you're writing about. You can see that th this is integral. Words are integral and words are art. And you can dazzle, razzle, dazzle your viewers to, to want to see your artwork because I know a lot of you have gone to websites, you read the bio and you're so bored then that you just kind of, get distracted by a cup of coffee and before you know it you know you're watching tv instead of doing art do you have any insights of what you want to do with your bio and, and things or did anything come up shannon uh no i'm gonna uh wait for this recording to be posted and then kind of go through it again because you said some really great phrases that i've would not have thought of and so i'll pick it apart make it maybe a little less grand <laughs> no uh, look at what you just did you just uh, pissed on your own your own bio oh i'm gonna dumb it down so you know it's like no yeah <laughs> shannon's like sitting there going no 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 you grab that you grab that and you can actually guess what because i used you as an example and i described your work you can actually put in parentheses, Stefan Bauman said, your work <laughs> inspires millions of people to see your work. I mean, you know, you could grab that because I actually, that came out of my mouth. And if, if I wanted to see you for it, it's actually on a recording. So you really, you really could, you know, uh, beat that in court. So, um, yeah, that's just kind of how you have to be. But, you know, it's fun. It's like, you know, it's art. We're, we're artists. We're, we're, we're here to do this. Um, and my That's job right. is, to, is to soften your relationship with, uh, with uh, websites and media and stuff. That's why when I, I do coaching calls, I have students record the calls. So I say, you know, don't take notes. Go get an app for your phone so that you can record the call. Because I'll say some brilliant things, you know, and... The, the, somebody will grab a pencil and go, okay, say that again. And it's like, I can't say it again. I have no idea what I just said. I was like, I create this stuff as I go. And it'd be like painting something excellently and then wiping it off and say, now you do it. We'll get to uh, uh, the questions here. Got a few questions. 
where did my questions go? Is that no? I think I got through it here. So here are the questions. So first thing I want to uh, you know tell you guys about my workshop in Vegas. That's another reason why I'm down here is because I'm taking pictures of uh, the places that we're going to and getting some permissions. So uh, if you're interested in my workshop in Vegas, then you want to go to my website, www.stephanbauman.com, and there you can um, uh, get more information about that. Um, so anyway, here's, a, here's Gary from Oklahoma. I paint in this studio from photos. I see in your PBS series, The Grand View, America's National Parks to the Eyes of an Artist. And then he puts in parentheses, good name, by the way, uh, telling your students to go outdoors and paint on location. Well, that takes so much work and energy. I would rather travel and take pictures and paint from them. For me, painting from pictures is no different than painting outside. And by the way, I'm a lot closer to the refrigerator and my beers. This is a little sarcasm there. Um, and then he goes on saying, how did you get the show and who did you have to know to make it? So uh, first thing, let's just take the first section uh, of this. Um, so painting from photo, uh, photos being the same as painting on location. You know, painting on location is, uh, it is a lot of burden. It's really hard. It's, it's one of those things that uh, requires to have good equipment. It requires to have good uh, um, organization. It's not an easy thing to do to paint outdoors. But for the most part, most of you are painting because it's not easy. You know, if it were easy, you would you would probably be bored with it. Or people who want to become painters take painting on because it's difficult. It's harder. Not everybody in the world can do it. And right now with YouTube and stuff, there's just a lot of people that are now painting um, in their studios from photographs. And sitting inside duplicating a photograph is like, you know, a Xerox machine duplicating a picture. It's not that it's not that stimulating. It's not that interesting. And I talk about changing, change the world. Uh, you know, if you're going to go into your studio, change the world. Well, a photograph rarely does that. What really changes the world is what you bring into it. And if you want to, like we're doing in uh, the coaching calls here, if you really want to change the world and and move people. You need to have a lot of information buried in your head so that you have a lot of options to put on your painting. And while you are sitting there painting for two or three hours on location, your brain is being filled up with all kinds of, of information that you, you're not even aware of. Um, you know, animals coming in and out, the sounds of nature, squirrels and things, um, just the smell causes you to recreate your memory from it. The lighting changes constantly, and while you're out there, you witness for yourself subconsciously what light does when it's on rocks and, and uh, how it reflects on water. Um, there's so much to get in, in painting outdoors, just being out there uh, that you're unaware of. Not to mention that the finished piece, a goal in itself. So. Why do we go, pay, you know, why, why is golfing popular? You know, it's like you're running around chasing a ball and, uh, you know, it's like you're, you're, you stick it in a hole. I mean, how hard could, could that be? Well, you know, I just pissed off like every golfer in the world because it's not easy. Why not just sit at a, at a peewee golf thing and just, you know, it's, it's much more fun to be at a peewee golf with a big alligator and a castle that you can put your ball through because it's not as challenging. And you have the experience of quite possibly creating a great work of art with under the most extreme circumstances. 
when I first went out to paint and was teaching painting, for 10 years I was taking students out there, painting with them, and never really getting it myself. And a lot of golf teachers teach golf, but they've never once actually gotten a hole in one because it's not easy. And when you do it, it's like, and you accomplish it, now you've done something with your life. You've done something with your world. I had one student in my classes and she called herself four ace. And I said, it was on her license plate, it said four ace. And I was like, why do you have four aces? Do you poker? She goes, no, I play golf. And I said, well, what does that ace mean? She says, I had four holes in one in competition. So four separate games in competition where she got four holes in one. And she's the envy of the entire golf community in, in Palo Alto because very few people actually have one hole in one, let alone four in competition. It only counts when you're in competition. And that way, when you go outdoors and you do painting, you, you, you have all of that coming at you. And to weave your way through and actually come up with something, it took me 10 years of teaching it and demonstrating it and, and doing the things that I do to try to create something that was worth something, that really, you know, and so it took me 10 years to get my hole in one, to get my first painting that was absolutely spot on what I anticipated it was when I first started. And it was the most complicated painting you could possibly imagine. And that's why you go out. It's a challenge. Yes, it's hard, but that's what makes it a challenge. It makes it a challenge to stand on a snowbank. Imagine this, Christmas morning, you get to go into Yosemite National Park, a park that is so crazy with tourists that, you know, I don't even want to ever go back there because the, the magic is gone. And I'm standing there at sunrise, Christmas morning. It's free to go into the park because the rangers are not even there. And I'm standing on a snowbank and it's literally 25 degrees outside. And I'm standing there painting Half Dome as the sun rises on Christmas morning. And I spend two and a half hours on that snowbank, probably close to death, not even aware about being uncomfortable because the magic was so intense. My painting is a witness of that, but my experience is priceless. You never get a chance to, to, to do stuff in life that are marks, you know. When I did my hole in one, I was at Mesa Verde. And as I'm driving up, the park is closed and it was snowing and the, the the ranger said, what are you doing out here? The park doesn't open until nine. And I said, I came all the way to California to paint Mesa Verde just to be horrified at the possibility that I wasn't going to be able to, to uh, paint it uh, because the tourism is crazy here. And he looked at me and he said, I'm going to let you in. So I drive into Mesa Verde three hours before everyone else. As I'm driving to the place in the snow, and it hadn't even been plowed, a grouse comes out of the trees, and he's dancing in front of me. And if you ever watch the grouses when they dance, it's like those Indian dancers. And he's dancing in front of me, and I'm like going, this is incredible. He's in my headlights, and he's dancing in the snow. And it was almost like the, the, the natives were giving me permission and their blessing to go out and paint this scene. And then I go into the cage and I look at Mesa Verde, which is just a horrible um, uh, place to try to do painting because you're in a cage and you, there's only a 10 by 10 area. And normally it's filled with tourists. That's why I, I wanted to go there early. And I sat there for three hours completely alone. And I created one of the most beautiful paintings that I ever did up to that point um, because I did something that was hard. I packed up and drove from San Francisco to Colorado. I went out in, in the snow being told I couldn't do it by you know the, the signs, but the ranger let me in. 
I got the Native American blessing from the grouse, and I sat out there by, in the park by myself, which otherwise you would have no permission to ever do. That's why you go outdoors to paint, because it's not about the painting, it's about the experience of doing it. And when you get your hole in one, you've changed your world. Now, don't go into your studio unless you're going to change the world. Well, when you do that, you change your life. You really do. So that's why you don't work from photographs. I've got people that, uh, you know, artists, and these are professional artists. They sell their paintings in major galleries. And they drive through Yosemite, and I kid you not, I sat there flabbergasted. And they hold up their camera and they outside the window as they're driving and they're taking pictures of the scene because they don't want to be bothered with having to get their stuff out. I mean, they're literally, their, their interaction with the park is snap, 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 snap. And then it's like, where's the bar? I'm going to go have a drink. Yeah, you can work from your photographs. Sure. Then you just become somebody that renders like a Xerox machine. And you have enough experience that you could put lights and shadows in places, but does it have, does it change your world? And if you have an experience like I had, you know, it gives you some of the tools that you may want to use that could change other people's world when they come into it. And just imagine if you're writing your bio, <laughs> back to Shadow's question, just imagine, you know, the, the words that you could use to describe your experience. It's, we're all looking for that. You know, we're all looking to do something that's unique and different. And being a planar painter is pretty cool. If you had to do something, it's a pretty cool thing. And to be able to travel to the national parks is pretty cool. So I think I'm going to end it here because I think I've got some of you inspired to go out there and paint. Well, I told you there was a lot of amazing information on marketing and getting your artwork out there and branding your art as being truly unique and special. It all starts with your artist statement and your bio. That's the core of who you are. These recordings are actually made during my Zoom calls on my Patreon group. So I invite you to join my Patreon group and have me discuss your work personally with a whole bunch of people online. It's an amazing group. So if you go to Patreon and then forward slash Bauman, if not search on Patreon for Bauman and join us. It's not expensive at all to have your artwork looked at by me and discussed by artists and uh, like I said this information that you just heard came from my podcast so I invite you to go over to patreon sign up and be part of my group there if you want more information on any of my workshops go to www.stephanbauman.com and there you can get information about upcoming workshops for 2023 there you can also find some information about how to get to my podcast. Basically, my podcasts are wherever you, you download your podcast. Hopefully, I'm there. If not, let me know. I'll sign up there so you can get my podcast. They're for free. There's nothing better than getting something for free. Just like going to YouTube. Go to my YouTube station. Sign up there. There's over 300 videos on painting and inspirational thoughts about becoming an artist. But the very best thing you can do is decide for yourself that this is the year that you are going to make art part of your life and sign up for coaching. It's a weekly uh, coaching that we do for a half hour. It's not that expensive. It's one on one, just you and me. And to do that, you can get information on my website or just give me a call at 415 606 9074. That's 415-606-9074. I just want to take this opportunity to thank you all for getting me to where I'm at being in the top 25 
of podcasts that people need to listen to for 2023. It's, it's an honor that I didn't see coming. So it wouldn't have been done if you weren't listening in like you are now. And I just wanted to thank you. And if I don't see you over on Patreon, look forward to some more podcasts like this. Go to my YouTube. Maybe sign up for a workshop. Just give me a call and let's just register you in when they're not expensive either. And believe me, they will change your life. So until next time, you have an amazing week. Thank you so much for your support. And always remember, don't go into your studio unless you plan to change the world. I'm Stefan Bauman. Thank you so much.